All right, good afternoon. Thank you for being here. I'm standing next to some of the most distinguished partners in traffic safety. I would like to thank everyone for being here, the media, the Tennessee Highway Patrol, the Tennessee Chiefs Police Association, Chiefs of Police Association, and the Sheriff's Association, and Mothers Against Drunk Driving. My name is Vic Donahoe. I'm the director of the Tennessee Highway Safety Office. The purpose of today's event is to recognize that many loved ones will not arrive at their destination this holiday period due to impaired drivers. In an effort to spread the awareness, the THSO is partnering with traffic safety partners across the state to promote the National Drug and Drunk Driving, Drug and Drunk Driving Prevention Month, which starts today, December 1st. This year, THSO and other traffic safety partners held its first sobriety checkpoint, focusing on drug drivers. Due to its success, we will be expanding the drug recognition program in the near future, in future year, and having additional checkpoints focusing mainly on drug driving. So far this year, 158 lives have been lost due to impaired driving crashes. This time last year, that number was 223. So this holiday season, the THSO will join with local law enforcement partners across Tennessee to increase, the, to increase enforcement and further reduce impaired driving. We ask Tennesseans to drive safely and always find a sober ride home. No one is invincible against an impaired driver. It is my, now my honor to introduce the next speaker, the Tennessee, uh, the Colonel of the Tennessee Highway Patrol, Tracy Trott. Well, it's not lost on me that today is December the 1st. Last year, in December, we lost 116 people to crashes at Tennessee. The highest month in six years that I've been Colonel. And we certainly don't want a repeat of that this year. All these people behind me, our partners in law enforcement across the state, have done a great job in DUI enforcement over the last few years and helped reduce the number of people that die each year on our highways. We've gone from a state that had about a 28% rate of fatalities for impaired drivers to this year only 17%. And as Vic noted, the, the big in decrease in the number of deaths attributed to, to DUI drivers. So this year we want to increase our efforts, reinforce what we stand for, and work toward the goals of zero deaths in our state. We in the Highway Patrol understand that we can't do this alone, and if we did not have the support of the Highway Safety Office, of the Sheriff's Association, of the Chief's Association, we could not be successful. But I promise you one thing, the THP and all our partners will be working diligently over the month of December and beyond to make sure as few people die on our roads as, as possible. And that includes very strict enforcement of our DUI statutes, along with our seat belts and other moving violations that cause death all the time. All these fatalities are preventable, whether it's taking a DUI driver off the road making someone buckle their seatbelt or obey the speed limit. They're all preventable, and we need to do everything in our power to make sure that everybody gets to enjoy the holidays and get to their destinations safely, and that's what we'll all be working for, and I thank the people behind me and the partnerships that we have that make that possible. I would like to introduce Chief Jeff Hughes, please, from the Brentwood Police Department to make some comments. Good afternoon. As the president of the Tennessee Association of Chiefs of Police, I am asking for your assistance in making our roads safer for everyone this holiday season. Please stop and think before you get behind the wheel if you've been drinking, if you've taken any prescription medications or drugs that will otherwise impair your driving. Think twice before you text or read emails uh, on your smartphone device. We've lost hundreds of folks this year already on our Tennessee roadways. I'm asking you to join me and the law enforcement community in keeping our roadways safe for everyone 
as we all take to the highways this holiday season. It is our hope that families everywhere will be able to travel and arrive safely at their destination. The police chiefs across Tennessee are committed and will work diligently with the Tennessee Highway Patrol, the local sheriffs, and the Tennessee Highway Safety Office to make sure our roads are safe. We ask you to help us by doing your part. At this time, I'm going to turn it over to Terry Ash. Thank you, Chief. Uh, I first want to thank the Highway Safety Council for continuing the program of educating the public. I want to thank the press for covering these events because this is the way that we can best get the information out to the citizens of this state. On behalf of the sheriffs in Tennessee, uh, of which I served as one for 30 years, we know the importance of the enforcement aspect. I thank our Tennessee Highway Patrol, our police chiefs across this state, in conjunction with the sheriffs, are fighting a day-to-day -day battle. But there are moments like this when we pause just for a moment to think about the seriousness of what is occurring with impaired drivers. And, and I said this at a function uh, a couple of weeks ago, three maybe, and I just feel like it's important to say it today because I get to introduce uh, real people as it relates to this. The hardest thing I did in 44 years is go knock on a door at two o'clock in the morning and awaken a family to give them that news. And I will promise you, sitting, standing here and standing behind me, there are men and women who have made hundreds and hundreds of those notices. It's heart-wrenching. So I think that's why we who do this every day are committed to the citizens of this state. We don't want to have to make another notification. So on behalf of the sheriffs in this state, uh, we ask you not to drive impaired. We ask you to seek out a designated driver and seek any alternative travel that you can do. If you've partied too much or gone with the wrong folks who abandoned you, uh, do like my mama used to say, son, call me if you get where you don't need to be. And, and everybody's got somebody to call. On behalf of what's occurring here today, it's a sad moment, but one I think that is appropriate. I would like to introduce to you uh, Ron and Shirley Singleton from Polk County. And if their message doesn't inspire you from the rest of us, then I'll be discouraged today because these are people who felt the real pain. Thank you. First thing I want to do is offer my gratitude to all law enforcement that are here today. Our family is deeply appreciative, especially during this time when there's a lack of respect for authority that's throughout our whole nation. Thank you so much. I'm going to tell you about uh, Brady Singleton. He was our son. He was our only child. And when he was born, he was named after my father-in-law, Grady Anderson, my wife's uh, dad. Grady Anderson taught in Cherokee County, North Carolina for 46 years. He was a graduate of Western Carolina University and Vanderbilt here in Nashville. And um, my wife also taught at the same uh, school system in Cherokee County, North Carolina. I taught at Copper Basin High School in Copper Hill, Tennessee for my whole career. And the reason I'm telling you that is because uh, Brady was probably the best known little boy um, in the tri-state area. Uh, he was known in Cherokee County, North Carolina. He was known in Fannin County, Georgia, and he was known in Polk County, Tennessee because of all the um, people that we had taught before and all of our associations with people in those three counties. We wanted to make sure that Brady had uh, the, the kind of life that we wanted him to, and we introduced him to music and sports and travel, and um, he loved animals, so we took him to zoos in Knoxville and Chattanooga, and we brought him here to the Nashville Zoo uh, twice. 
Because of his uh, love of animals and the farm where my wife grew up, uh, he loved to go to that farm and he loved to go out and, and be among the animals in the field and uh, ride uh, a four-wheeler out there and be among the cows and things like that. He just loved the farm. And he had a lot of toy tractors, many, many, many toy tractors. That was his favorite toy. And uh, we wanted him to be well-traveled. We took him to Niagara Falls and for his fourth birthday, we had already uh, got the tickets and a reservation to uh, take him to Hawaii and, and uh, enjoy Waikiki Beach and have his birthday there. My wife had done extensive planning on that, but uh, he never made that. All parents have little funny stories to tell about uh, their children, and, and I'm no exception. I want to tell you two. And the first one was, we taught him that uh, you have to kiss it and make it better. You know a child will fall down and they'll get a boo-boo and, and uh, it helps to uh, comfort them and, and give them some support when uh, they have a little fall or something like that. One day uh, I was sitting at the dining room table, had shorts on, had my leg outstretched and he brought in one of those heavy metal tractors and he accidentally dropped it on my shin and I said, Brady, ouch, that hurt. You're going to have to kiss it and make it better. So he picked up the toy tractor and kissed it. <laughs> the other story, which, you know, this is uh, just to give you an idea of what his little personality was like. Uh, he was a thumb sucker, and we tried to teach him uh, different ways to, to not suck his thumb. And one morning he's laying between us and he's sucking his thumb. And, and I said um, to myself, I'm going to stick my own thumb in my mouth and say, yuck. Maybe that'll do something. So I put my thumb in my mouth and, and uh, I looked over at him and he had his little thumb in his mouth. And I pulled it back out and said, yuck, Brady. And he said, here, Daddy, try mine. <laughs> I guess his was a whole lot better than, than mine was. But we fast forward now to April 29th, 2008. Brady is three years, nine months old. And um, that's the morning that I kissed him by for the last time put him in the car seat. My wife is going to take him to her parents' house in the just over the line in North Carolina where he'll spend the day on the farm. And um, she was going to her school, which was also uh, just past that. At about the same time, two men from Farner, Tennessee were preparing for an all-day drunk. They had made plans to go to Murphy, North Carolina and buy all the liquor they could. and. Um, it was Nicholas Brumbley as the driver and, and uh, Charlie Womble or, or Joey Womble um, that made these plans. And they uh, were well known already to law enforcement. They were already in drugs and alcohol, been arrested many times. And uh, they bought that alcohol in Murphy, North Carolina and immediately started drinking on their way back to Tennessee. Later when uh, after they'd been drinking for a while, they picked up a woman of a Murphy address and uh, they continued their drinking. The three of them in the cab of a truck. There was no designated driver. They were all determined to get drunk. After lunch, Brady and Grady went out for a drive and they went uh, through their property on Old Ducktown Road. That's a road that uh, they own property on both sides of the road. It was a gravel road, very small, uh, half of it was in North Carolina, half of it in Tennessee. At the end of the line, in the Tennessee side, there was a beer joint. And uh, that faced Tennessee Highway 68. It was there that Brumbley, Womble, and Sneed uh, tried to buy more beer, but they were already drunk. And the attendant there knew that, and he wouldn't sell them any more beer. Brumbley, angry, uh, angered and uh, scratched out, throwing gravel, uh, got his speed up, they think, 35 to 40 miles per hour, according to the North Carolina Highway Patrol. And uh, this is a little gravel road now, so when they met Brady and Grady, uh, he was so drunk he didn't put the brakes on until he was right on top of them and hit them. The collision sent Brady flying into a creek, and the wreckage ended up on top of him. Grady was also sent through the air, and he hit a tree, knocking him unconscious. The uh, three people who caused the accident, well, it wasn't an accident, it was a caused crash. Uh, the three people who caused this crash uh, did not stop. 
they realized that there wasn't anyone else around and they were going to try to get away with this, they could have saved Brady in 10 seconds. Brady was pinned. He was unhurt. Um, of course, they did an autopsy later and found nothing that caused his death except for drowning. He drowned in that little creek. Brady tried to breathe. He was face down in the creek. Took in huge amounts of mud and water. And he tried and tried until he drowned. I had just started my fourth period class at Copper Basin High School where I was a teacher. It was uh, block scheduling. It was the last period of the day. And I got the call I needed to go to the hospital. The hospital was next door, so it wasn't a long drive. I ran out the door, got in my truck, and drove to the hospital. And when I got to the emergency room, people were running in and out with a look of terror on their faces. I'll never forget the looks of the people that were trying to revive Brady. I still didn't know what happened. Uh, I, I knew something had happened. I knew that there was a wreck, maybe. And I asked the attendant on the front desk, was he breathing when they brought him in? And she said, no. He wasn't. And about that time, my wife Shirley came in from her school in North Carolina, and we were escorted to the hospital chapel where we prayed as hard as we could. But in a little while, they came in and told us that Brady had passed away. He didn't make it. They took us to a little room beside the emergency room, and uh, we saw Brady at still mud in his hair and in his ears and his nose. It was more than we could bear. Other relatives came, our minister from church came, and uh, in a few minutes uh, the North Carolina Highway Patrol came in and told us that it had been a hit and run wreck. We still had not known. That's the first time that we knew what had happened. Grady Anderson was also brought to Copper Basin Medical Center and he had a broken back, a broken pelvis, and a hematoma on the brain. They airlifted him by helicopter to Erlanger Hospital in Chattanooga. I thought then when I saw him, we will have two funerals this week. Later, you know, it was much later, um, the North Carolina Highway Patrol came in and said, the people who had caused this had been arrested in Polk County, Tennessee. It was the Post Polk County Sheriff's Department who arrested them, and they were really drunk. They tested at twice the legal limit. Now, this is four hours afterwards, so they told us that uh, probably at the time of the crash, uh, three times the legal limit. We went home that night and, of course, we couldn't sleep. All of Brady's things were around us, his toys and his books and his clothes, and all we could do was cry. We had to make arrangements for a funeral. The funeral home didn't have a casket for a three-year-old. They don't keep those in stock. Three-year-olds are not supposed to die. They showed us a magazine with uh, two caskets that we picked one from. When we received friends, they uh, opened the doors at 4 p.m. and there was no break until midnight that night. It was uh, solid people from 4 to 12. My brother estimated 2,000 people came through to pay their respects. A lot of people said that God will never put on you more than you can bear. But that's not true. And if you read that scripture, it's in 1 Corinthians, and it, it really says God won't allow you to be tempted beyond your means to, to uh, deal with it. And he'll always supply you a way out. You know, it had nothing to do with how much that you could bear. And I've always thought about Jesus on the cross, even at that time. He said, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? You know, uh, he had more on him than he could bear. He thought maybe God is not present now. Maybe he's letting me go, and, and of course uh, God came back, and, uh, and we did too. We recognized we couldn't bear the burden alone, that without God and our trust in Him, we couldn't bear it. It's been a long healing process. 
even though it's in 2008, it's just like yesterday to us. We knew that uh, God does not interfere in everything that happens on earth. If he did, there wouldn't be free will. And we don't know why he didn't interfere in this one. Why didn't he cause those people to wreck? Why didn't he cause them to run out of the road? But he didn't. They hit Brady. And I don't know what the purpose is. And I don't know if it's part of it being here today and, and all of us trying to be more vigilant and uh, trying to stop drug and drunk driving. I don't know. I know one thing, I spent my whole career teaching and coaching other people's kids and I look forward to the day when, when I could coach Brady and uh, it didn't happen. These uh, uh, shirts were Brady's, his little Tennessee Titan shirt and UT. I really miss uh, Saturdays and Sundays and not having Brady there. He could do the touchdown symbol before he could talk. and. Uh, by the way, this picture was uh, the day before he died. Uh, he just had a few hours to live here. Brady and I were out in the yard picking up sticks on April 29th, and I took several pictures. And so that's one of the last images we have of Brady. 33 scholarships have been given in Brady's name. Maybe that's part of the reason too, I don't know. There's been 23 Brady Singleton Memorial Scholarships given at Copper Basin High School. And in Cherokee County, there are 10 called the Brady Grady Scholarships given in his memory. Grady Anderson survived the wreck, but he was weeks in intensive care where he was unconscious. We wondered if he would live or die. He did live. He went through excruciating pain though, and, and he had physical and mental and emotional problems after that, you can imagine. Grady died in 2014, still suffering from those physical and emotional problems. I want to thank you all for being here today and for your vigilance in helping stop drug and drug driving. Thank you for letting us tell Brady's story. God bless. This concludes the press conference. Uh, will be available for media immediately following.